How's it going, everybody? Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. I invite you to pull up a chair, sit back, and relax. And welcome to welcome you to episode seven of the SPEMA Council podcast. We're back from reading break. Hope everyone had a relaxing Thanksgiving. Hope everyone got a chance to, uh, you know, um, uh, tur- uh, tur- uh, turn back their pace of pa- pace of life. Take it, take thing, take things slowly. Uh, relieve yourself of stress, whatever you did to relax this re- reading break, or at least tried to, I, uh, I hope, I hope you did. I hope you did that. And, you know, to those who are, um, who have uh, gone back to uh, St. Catharines again to uh, keep at a semester, hope, uh, hope you're safe, hope you're he- hope you're healthy. And uh, I, I sincerely hope you're doing well. Uh, my guest co-host for this for for the for this episode uh, is none other than uh, SPEMA Council Exec Courtney Christie making her co-hosting debut. Not a big deal. How's it going? Good. Thank you for having me, Will. It's I've been listening for a while now, so to be on the other end of things seems really cool, and I'm very excited. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, well. Um, this was a heck of an episode. I got to tell you, uh, we had Emma Lambert, who's the manager of, uh, of special of, uh, manager of events for, uh, for motion ball and, um, unbelievable episode, unbelievable story, uh, that, that she, that she has, uh, with getting involved with motion ball and how the company has grown in the pa- in, in, in a short amount of time. It's, uh, you know, equivalent to a rocket ship going to space. I got to tell you, uh, uh, what were your initial thoughts on, uh, on, on this, uh, little interview? Yeah. Emma and motion ball as a whole, they're amazing. Um, she is just so positive, so easy to talk to very welcoming. And she has a great story, one that all of us students can learn from and try to immaculate in some way, shape or form moving forward. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, Positivity is a huge thing that we all that we all need in our in our in our lives. Um, you know she and you know she she's she's she emphasized that uh, a bunch of times and you know really puts things into pers- and really put things into perspective about you know like how we're complaining about missing about you know missing some sports, but you know in comparison to the uh, Special Olympics athletes court, it's a it's 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 a whole different ball game with regards to what what they're dealing with yeah exactly and like she mentioned you know some of the struggles that they have in comparison to what we are going through you know we still kind of have things that we can go back to normal with you know but they may not so it really puts things into perspective that's for sure yeah yeah um she, you know she also and you know uh, she also mentions a bunch of you know different points that you guys can can uh, can, can take she she found she you know uh it took a uh she found in uh, her niche through a through a through a lengthy process her path to motion ball uh took a bunch took a bunch of it took a bunch of different turns it you know it what it's it, it it was nowhere near linear but you know she was. But you know she was. But she. But she was passionate. Uh, she knew that she wanted to commit to that space. And you know what's amazing, uh, what you can do when uh, when Pat when you when you know you have your passion and your niche, and you know they come together in all. And you know in, in her case, almost perfect harmony. And I gotta tell you, it's you know it's 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 a it's a beautiful thing to see, especially since uh, motion balls become the phenomenon like it is. Yeah, exactly. I think her story is one that us students can totally relate to, you know, being in university, not necessarily knowing what path you're going to take or what you want to pursue and then, you know, end up pursuing a strong passion of yours and being successful at it. She's a great example of that and one that we can all look to moving forward. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think it's time to send over to, uh, to our, to our interview. Uh, Court, any final thoughts before uh, uh, we, we swing it over to the main feature? No, just enjoy everyone. It's a great episode. That's for sure. Definitely. Definitely. All right. It's the, it's now that time. Uh, we're, we, we're uh, happy to send it over to uh, Emma Lambert, manager of events at Motion Ball. Uh, we hope you guys enjoy. Cheers, folks. Welcome to another episode of the SPEMA Council podcast. And uh, I tell you, we got a, another good one for you today. Um, she is, uh, she, she is from, um, she is from motion ball. Uh, if you don't know what motion, motion, motion ball is, is a great organization that runs, uh, 
that runs tons of great events supporting Special Olympics and Special Olympics athletes. And this year was quite different as they hosted their first ever virtual marathon of sport of Rogers Sportsnet. And uh, it is a pleasure to welcome on Emma Lambert to the show. How's it going? And uh, again, welcome. Thank you so much, both of you. Yeah, so, so great to be here. Thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, as we always like to start off the show uh, with the usual first question, uh, what makes your story unique? What makes my story unique? You know, I think we, we definitely all have unique stories to share. I love, you know, meeting people through my job, whether it's students or volunteers with the organization and hearing, you know, how they ended up at a point that they're giving back through Motion Ball. Um, and, you know, I'm in a particularly lucky situation where, you know, Motion Ball is part of my life because it's actually my job. Um, I work full time at our, our head office in Toronto and, and have the opportunity to work with um, students and young professionals in cities and in communities coast to coast. Um, been at Motion Ball for just over three years now. Um, but I think what makes my particular situation really unique is that Motion Ball actually was a part of my life well before I was working there full time. Um, I was lucky enough to have started attending Motion Ball events and, and volunteering at events and actually coaching Special Olympics um, while I was in university. So from first year, uh, I was in phys ed at Queens and I you know, was introduced to Motion Ball and, and in turn to the Special Olympics movement um, on campus. And really it, it you know became a part of my life just you know, I started volunteering. Um, it actually really introduced me to the entire world of, of, you know, sport for people with intellectual disabilities and paired really well with what I was studying in school, which was, um, yeah, benefits of sport, the benefits of physical activity from a science perspective and, and a social perspective as well. So um, I definitely got more and more involved in that disability sport world and, and in those causes. And through that really um, started to learn more about jobs and and you know career opportunities that existed in kind of that sport and cause space um you know through a variety of, of different opportunities motion ball and, and volunteering my special olympics being one of them i uh then took kind of the next step after my undergrad and went and did a postgrad in sport and event marketing um and then as i was finishing up school it, it really came full circle in that a role at motion ball's head office um for an event coordinator opened up and you know I fit a lot of the qualifications on paper but it was really that you know involvement that I already had with the cause and that connection I already had to Special Olympics that I think really gave me the edge as, as a candidate and and really you know was the the perfect step for for me in my career and that um you know I could take on a role that was using all the skills that I, I just learned in school but that you know meant so much to me already so I think that makes my story pretty unique you know in in my job right now you know I reach out to students and, and work with student leaders like yourselves and um you know convince them that being involved with motion ball will be a great part of their university experience and it's so easy for me to do that because you know that's exactly what my story was it was you know getting involved with, with a cause that I didn't know much about before I'd actually never really met anyone with an intellectual disability or, or had a relationship or interacted with anyone from that community leading up to my time in university. So that introduction to that cause for me was huge. Um, you know, I really didn't know what to expect. I was a bit nervous going into it, but attending that first Motion Ball event, you know, changed my life, not just in terms of what the course of the rest of my four years at Queens looked like, but, you know, it's now dictated what, what my career path has been to. So um, yeah, kind of a, a unique place to have started. Uh, definitely very, very grateful for where it's brought me now. Definitely. And, you know, before we move on to the next topic, I think this is a great example of, uh, of, of finding your passion, but also finding your niche. Uh, you know, you obviously have, you know, a, pa a, a passion and desire to, you know, succeed in this space. And um, there's, and there's, a, and part of it is, is, a, is there's a lot of a giving back aspect to, uh, to it, because, you know, you're not just delivering a sport experience to these athletes. You're delivering a life experience. Exactly. And when you know, when you factor that when you factor that that in, that makes the job especially especially more meaningful, considering that, you know, these athletes don't have the typical options or access, which is a big factor than, you know, than people who are, uh, who are um, able-bodied in, in that, in, in that, in that sense. And, you know, find, you know, finding your niche, you know, it, it's, it, it is, a, it is, a, it is a, it is a, it is a tricky thing uh, for the majority of, uh, of, 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 stu of students, you know, especially mm -hmm. I know SPEMA students have multiple areas in which they're passionate in, but, you know, 
once you once you find once you find it, you know, you tend to not you tend to not look back, and um, you know, uh, there's uh, it's a bit of a cliche, but there's no stopping it until uh, you reach uh, until you realize the potential of your desire of, of your desired niche. So, uh, a great example of uh, of that uh, turning out uh, really well. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, it's also a cool example of how volunteering during your time at post secondary can lead you and show you different directions volunteer, that you can volunteer, take, so. volunteer. It's exactly. yeah, exactly. Drilled, in our, it's drilled in our heads, I tell you, it is yeah. drilled in our heads constantly. But you know, you, you realize how true it really is. It, re- it honestly really is. You know, I look at even not just my experience with Special Olympics and with Motion Ball, but even, you know, I volunteered in 2015 at the Toronto Pan Am Games and just, you know, the people that I met there have led to other opportunities and led to, you know, meeting the right person to get my internship when I was in my post-grad and, you know, profs say it so much. I'm sure you both have heard it a number of times from profs, which is, you know, volunteer. You never know what it could lead to. Um, I always tell students too, like it could lead, it could be as direct as you volunteer with an organization and a job opens up and you're the perfect fit for it. But sometimes it's indirect, right? Sometimes it's making the right connection. Sometimes it's just gaining the right experience, like working in events, especially if we have positions that open up at Motion Ball, like sometimes we get applicants who might not have solid work experience working in events if they're just coming out of university especially but you can really you know amplify your resume and and your experience by by adding to it with with different volunteer experiences and I always say like don't discredit your volunteer experience in fact like it sometimes shows even more than a job opportunity has because not only was it really valuable maybe you you know had a great role as a volunteer it also shows that you're willing to put in the work and you know you weren't paid to do it and you still you know went out there and and got that experience and added to your skill set and and your resume in turn so it can it can really strengthen your application especially when you're you know fresh at a university and might not have years worth of job experience to back you up so it's huge Mm -hmm. yeah happy to have been a good example for that continuing and what our profs are are constantly telling us yeah (laughs) yeah for sure it really puts things into perspective when you see someone successfully execute that and you know yourself encouraging the practice you know it just makes us students want to be out there more. Mm. So you did allude to it already, but you attended both Queens University and George Brown College for post-secondary education. How did these two routes shape your desired niche in the sport industry? Mm -hmm. So I will say, I think like many people, when I was finishing up high school, I had really no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I went to Queens for physical and health education, really still not knowing what I wanted to do. I figured, you know, maybe it could lead to a career in physio or teaching. And I definitely kind of kept those options open too for the first couple of years that I was at Queens. But, um, you know, I kind of thought, you know what, I don't know what I want to do, but I'm sure that this is a program I'll enjoy sport and physical activity had always been a huge part of my life. And and I did want to learn a bit more about, you know, it's more scientific and and social applications. So taking that program made sense. And I thought, as long as I take something I enjoy, get a degree, I'll figure it out, Um, which thankfully, that's definitely what what happened. Um, So really, I spent my first year at Queens, just kind of meeting people, having fun, definitely wasn't like a go getter trying to get involved with a bunch of things, really the opposite. That's why I also tell students all the time, just because you haven't been involved in university yet, doesn't mean you can't you know, start getting involved in your fourth year even. So definitely I spent my first year just like meeting people and hanging out. Um, no regrets. It was super fun. Um, and then when I was heading into second year, I thought, you know, I should, at, you know, start looking at, at some opportunities to get involved. And um, I needed a job, first of all, so, so you know, pay my rent and, and tuition and, and all that fun stuff that, that comes with university. So I started looking at on-campus jobs and one that really stuck out to me um, was a part-time student position working uh, for Queens Athletics um, on the home event staff. So I was, you know, pretty fortunate, applied and, and was accepted to the role. So starting in my second year, I started working um, most like varsity home games. So football and basketball were kind of my two main sports and started, you know, in my first year doing that, just taking tickets and showing people their seats. Um, and like really loved it like I've, I've always I grew up around sport and you know whatever city we my family lived in we'd always you know get tickets to the local university or college football and, and basketball games so that atmosphere was so familiar to me already and, and so positive and um you know Queens has a, a pretty strong athletic program and we're they were investing a lot too and trying to get students out to games and you know the football atmosphere is just something that that can't be replaced so um I loved being in that environment um and I was learning so much even in you know the minor roles that I was and I was learning so much about what went into the 
um, you know, what, it, what goes into events, what goes into to sporting events um, from kind of a more organizational business perspective. Um, so was really loving that at the time, but, you know, never really thought like, oh, I could see myself doing work similar to this as a career. It was just like a good part-time job. I was also working at The Gap at the time, which I didn't love. Um, so yeah, definitely <laughs> preferred my job working in sport than in retail. Um, but along that same time, I was, you know, getting more involved with volunteer opportunities, whether it was Special Olympics or some like youth sport programs that we ran on campus um I was just learning more and more about um kind of like I said that that niche field the where sport meets a cause um like where sport and charity or, or philanthropy kind of come together and um it wasn't really until I decided one summer I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do um but I had worked for a couple of months, like driving a beer cart, made some good money that way and was just thinking, you know, I need to do something and, and figure out if this world is, is really for me and, and if this could be my next step. So I um, randomly moved to Toronto for two months um, and volunteered at the Pan Am Games. So put pause on my job, saved whatever money I could. Um, I actually lived in like an empty apartment that my friend was kind enough to lend me for um, the month and a half or so that I was there. Literally brought a sleeping bag and wasn't sure what to expect, but um, volunteered at the Pan Am Games and, you know, again, one of the largest sporting events Toronto's ever taken on. So it was such a great way to learn more, do more, meet more people. Um, and really, you know, that's when I thought like, okay, this world is real. Like there's hundreds of people who work in this like sport philanthropy world. Um, and yeah, it was such a great experience. And then from there, I, I decided to, when I was finished my undergrad, go into sport and event marketing at Georgetown College, um, which, you know, I find more and more people are doing these days too, kind of combining that university, um, more like textbook focused experience that, you know, you really do like need these days in a lot of cases um, with a college postgrad that, you know, it was only one year, super hands on, um, had an internship component that was like a really, really great combination and, and was really what I was looking for. So um, I think something I was kind of worried about too coming out of my more sciencey degree from Queens was that I had a lot of really good experience and, and had the undergrad degree, but didn't necessarily have much of like a business um, side of things. So going into that sport marketing program really did kind of fill a lot of gaps. And I was able to take a few courses in like marketing and, and management and business, similar, I'm sure, to courses that um, you take in sports management. I just didn't really have that, that part of it yet. So um, that was a, a great addition. And I, I interned at Right to Play, um, which again, an organization that fits right into that like sport and, and charity. They do a lot of sport for development uh, in communities around the world. So um, yeah, that was both, I think, combined to create like a pretty clear path for me. Um, and like I said, it's a pretty niche working in this kind of cross sector of, of sport and, and nonprofit, but there are a few of us here and it's a really great place to be. So very grateful for, for both experiences and how they kind of complemented each other in that way. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the, like that, that route there, you know, I am at like, uh, you, that you alluded to, there was, there seems to be a lot of, you know, twists and turns of, you know, do I want to do this? Do I, do I want, do I want to, do, do I want, do I want to do that? And, you know, I don't think people realize the luxury of, you know, how, of how much time you actually, you actually have, you know, if you, even if you have like an inkling of what, you, of what, of what you, if you, of what you want, if you, what you, what you want, what you want to do, sorry. Um, you know, you can, you know, if, if you use your time, what, if you use your time wisely, then, then, you know, chances are that, you know, you're good, you're going to create opportunity, you're going to A, invest in yourself and B, create opportunities uh, da uh, down, you know, down, down the line, even if it's something, you know, as, uh, as simple as, you know, as, as, as you know, t or ticket taken or taking like a random volunteer opportunity and saying, okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll get involved in this no idea no no maybe i have no clue about of, of what's what it's about but uh maybe but maybe it'll but maybe it'll lead to something so sure. you know that you know that's you know again very very in, uh in, interest in, interesting route uh definitely getting out of your comfort definitely getting out of your comfort zone theme of the show alerts um and uh you know alluding into uh the next question which is um uh, your your time your uh, current uh, tenure with Motion Ball. Uh, you've worked your way up various positions up into your current position as the as the uh, national manager of events. Um, you know, 
during you know your early stages of getting involved in motion ball can you pinpoint any uh any moments that made you decide that yes i want to get get and get into this full time and fully immerse myself with it yeah so um i will say like i said i volunteered with motion ball at just motion ball events and then uh with some special olympics programs too when i was living in kingston um never really thought much of it beyond like oh this is such a great like volunteer opportunity um right. then when i went to you know or went to my postgrad at, at college here in toronto i had attended a couple of motion ball toronto events um so kind of just stayed involved with the cause that way um didn't really know much to be honest about like their operations outside of toronto and kingston like motion ball um runs events in cities across canada and we're, we're growing every year which is exciting but um, i didn't know much about it outside of kind of those those events in kingston um and then the two major events in toronto so i had just kind of been involved as a general participant and supporter in my first year living in toronto um but was actually really interesting about the role that ended up coming up at motion ball right around the time that i was finishing school um is the role actually focused on running the university program um, for Motion Mall, which at the time, the only university chapter that existed for Motion Mall was actually at Queen's. So I'd already, you know, wow. attended the events and, and been able to experience, um, you know, Motion Mall and the cause, which is Special Olympics while I was in university. And this job was actually going to be expanding that to other schools and bringing that same experience to students across the country. So I think that really, you know, spoke to me so much in terms of it had been such a big part of you know, what I had just experienced at school um, and, you know, was the opportunity to bring that to other people. The skills that the job required were also, you know, really in line with what I'd been working towards, which was, you know, working, you know, managing events, um, building relationships, working with sponsors, um, all these things that I did want for the first step of my career, where no matter where it went, um, was, you know, listed in this position at Motion Mall, which, which was pretty neat. So um, when I was interning at Right to Play, also my, my main role was running um, a schools program as well. So working with the, the Canadian fundraising team to run, you know, Right to Play awareness and, and fundraisers um, at high schools and elementary schools across the country. So I kind of already um, had some experience working with, a, you know, a large group of, of schools that are all engaging with the cause. Um, so this was just a different cause and, and a new opportunity. So, you know, definitely right off the top, I was like, this works so well at Queens. It's so awesome. I've experienced it myself. So, you know, I think I would be the right person to help bring it to other schools. So um, yeah, for in the beginning, that was definitely, you know, the my main focus was just getting my feet under me at Motion Mall, learning more about the organization as a whole, learning about all the events that take part across that take place across Canada, um, and then really working to to grow that university program. So we are now in thirty five schools, um, which is which is awesome. So just you know, to see the the Motion Mall events and and the model. You know, for those listening who don't know, Motion Mall events really work to bring together young Canadians and Special Olympic athletes, so people with intellectual disabilities, um, in one place for, you know, one awesome experience. In most cases, it's sport, so the Marathon of Sport is the main event that we run in cities and, and on university campuses across Canada. We also run gala events, which are more big fun parties, um, which are great too, and, and they also, you know, bring together you know, young philanthropists and um, Special Olympics athletes, so individuals from the community with, with intellectual disabilities. So, you know, the thing that, about Motion Mall that I always love and I think that makes it such such a thing that people come back to um, is that that deep connection to the cause. So, you know, when you're fundraising for Motion Mall and then attending the events, you know, you're not just getting that feeling of like, oh, I'm supporting a cause and this is good. You're actually meeting and building relationships with the Special Olympic athletes, with the people who are who are directly supported by the funds that you've raised. So, um, you know, the opportunity to bring that feeling and, and that movement to other campuses across the country was definitely something that was super appealing to me and that, you know, we've we've been successful with so far and it, it's it's been awesome to be such a part of of the growth in that sense yeah that's awesome yeah. um so speaking of the events that motion ball has so the event that motion ball is known for is the marathon of sport although it had to go virtual this year like many other things yes. uh, motion ball still had the chance to partner with sportsnet who televised the event alongside the star athletes what was this process like to get the partnership signing with Sportsnet and considering that this format was a relatively new endeavor as well. Yeah, so what a year. I mean, very, so many challenges for, you know, so many organizations and, you know, sport programs for 
really, you know, all sport from programs across Canada, of course, including Special Olympics programs have really Definitely. been paused since March. Um, so, you know, that's meant for the Special Olympic athletes who, you know, rely on these programs for their, you know, not just physical activity each week and, and their sport, but, you know, social relationships and confidence building um there's so much you know that individuals with intellectual disabilities get out of special olympics and then there's so those programs are so important in so many ways so you know we as motion ball we exist to support those programs and we exist to support those athletes so you know it was pretty devastating hearing you know just right from from the get-go all the athletes that were impacted by the cancellation of programs and so many competitions that were had were scheduled you know couldn't go forward so you know, being that we exist to support this important cause, like right away, we thought, you know, just because we can't run in person events like we normally would, like we need to do something like this is why we exist. This is why our cause is so important. And it's resonated with so many Canadians is that these individuals, you know, have often so often been pushed to the side in society. And, you know, a lot of people don't know what the lives of, of individuals with intellectual disabilities can be. So we need to fulfill, you know, this, this reason why we're here and, and why we've had so many people supporting our cause. So definitely we had to unfortunately cancel all of the in-person marathon of sport events that we had scheduled um, and flip to virtual. And it's pretty amazing to see where we ended up. So like you mentioned, Courtney, we were, um, broadcasted on Sportsnet um, on September 26th. The event ended up um, raising over a million dollars in one day, which has definitely never happened before um, with Motion Ball. So um, yeah, thanks so much to you both. We had so many Brock students involved this year, which which was outstanding. And um, yeah, so it was it was pretty remarkable. But till I was looking back actually in my notebook the other day of like my notes from you know, March, April, May, like those months where we just really had no idea what was going on. <laughs> we weren't sure what to start oh planning for, like didn't know what, what the case was going to be at one point. Um, you know, we were like talking about doing this virtual marathon of sport and I was going to splice it together on my iPhone and, you know, to be looking at these notes of what our original idea was to then have it get to a point where it was broadcasted nationally on Sportsnet with so many you know, Canadian celebrities um, and supporters was it's pretty neat to see kind of where we started. And um, definitely our goal from the beginning was, you know, we know we can't replicate the magic of emotional event. Like we know that being in person, meeting the athletes in person, you know, getting to experience a fun day alongside your friends, like that just can't be replicated in a virtual world. But um, we were pretty determined to at least replicate the spirit of marathon of sport um, and really, you know, we identified what the key elements were that, that we really needed to stick to regardless of if it was in person or virtual. And that was fundraising. Like those funds were, were so important for the cause. Um, and, you know, we're, we're so grateful we were able to generate such a significant amount of funding for Special Olympics. They'll definitely need it going forward as they try and bring back programs safely and, you know, with, with new rules and restrictions and stuff, uh, it's going to be needed more than ever. So um, fundraising was huge and, and definitely something that we wanted to promote and, and provide people an opportunity to fundraise for the cause. And um, we really wanted that, that special Olympic athlete interaction, you know, our athletes look forward to this event in, in their community every single year. So providing them an opportunity to get involved while also providing our supporters, whether it's our professionals or university students, the opportunity to meet those special Olympic athletes like they normally would. Um, was huge and then just providing value back to our supporters you know we that's what I love about Motion Ball is we're not you know knocking on your door asking for money we're saying you know we're throwing this awesome event please come please support you know in return we're going to give you something that you're going to remember as a highlight of your year mm -hmm. um, so we definitely still wanted to be able to provide that engaging fun meaningful experience um, that you know we're, we're so used to and lucky to be able to do so um, yeah, honestly, the, the wheels were turning and we have a really small staff. There's, there's six of us who work full time at our head office in Toronto. So we were connecting just like this over Zoom every day. Um, and then, you know, we have our, our co-founders, the other Incan brothers, um, founded Motional in the early 2000s and have stayed extremely involved on our board of directors. Um, they're definitely our, our leaders. So we worked with them really closely. Um, and then we have, you know, volunteers in, in our communities across the country. So definitely lots of ideas going back and forth, you know, never was there a moment where we thought we shouldn't do something like very much. We wanted to make sure that we were, you know, respecting people's ability to support, um, but at the same time, you know, providing a way for people to give back to Special Olympics who were able to do so. So um, eventually, you know, we reached out to Tessa Virtue, who's been a huge supporter of Motion Ball and of Special Olympics for the past few years. She's gotten to know the other Brothers, um, 
run a ton of our events and, and she's just amazing. And, you know, she was so willing to lend her voice to the cause and, and to help us in any way, which, you know, as soon as we had Tessa on board, you know, one of Canada's best athletes ever and, and just kindest people as well, we, we knew we were going to be okay. So she helped connect us with, um, a lot of other, you know, Canadian athletes and, and celebrities who were willing to lend their time. Um, and then it was actually through a member of our board of directors um, who had a works in in the media industry. So he's again just a volunteer with Motion Ball, and he um, had some connections at Rogers. So he was able to reach out and introduce us. And you know, we just kind of pitched. This is our plan. You know, we want to support Special Olympics. We have Tessa and these few other Canadian celebrities who are willing to kind of you know lead um, lead the movement and, and get people involved and, and get people fired up for, to support the cause. So um, yeah, Rogers was an incredible partner. They were, were so excellent to work with and so willing to you know lend their airtime and, and time on their social pages and their talent even. Um, so yeah, it was it turned out to be a really great partnership that came together very last minute we you know had the production rolling and had the athletes involved and and the celebrities involved um but you know it wasn't confirmed with rogers until about a month before the event so definitely a lot of work gearing up and and bringing it to life but you know our whole team and our founders and, and our board were were so instrumental in this so it was definitely a neat thing to be a part of um i think we'll all remember you know obviously how COVID affected us but um to be able to you know really look back and see how our organization was able to pivot in such an unprecedented time um, is something, you know, I think I'll always be really proud of. So it was great to be a part of. For sure. For sure. I mean, that's, you know, that that's no small feat uh, to get your, to get uh, an event that, you know, you, you, you were accustomed to doing in person, but now you have it televised to a national audience as, the, as this one, as this one big thing, you know, first off, um, you know, great, mar- uh, the marketing strategy that you used, um, to gain, to gain support, uh, I think, uh, I think is, you know, what, is what fuel, what fuels the fire. Uh, the mm-hmm. fact that you put, uh, your, uh, your support, your supporters first and, and list and listing the, be- and, and prioritizing the benefits instead of, instead of starting with, we, uh, we're looking, we're looking for finance, we're looking for financial support. I imagine really increase, it really increased the, really increased the buy-in, especially since, you know, the value of everyone, of everyone's dollars has been, uh, has been enhanced, has been enhanced in more yeah, way, in more course. ways, in more ways than one, uh, for, you know, for, you know, a variety of reasons, good, good or good or bad. And, <clears throat> And and the fact that um, you you guys you guys got uh, got to be got to be with got to go on Sportsnet got to televise it to a national audience only amplified your message uh, of you know what your what your mission is and what your values are to the to the entire country. But you know the 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 probably the the import the probably the. Uh, the part that most people don't realize is that, you know, this, this was meaningful to the, to the athletes to, you know, see, uh, to, you know, see uh, what they were doing and, um, and to, and to amplify their accomplishments on air. But the hidden part that the viewers didn't see is the, is the connection that the, that the athletes had with, uh, with the, with the commit, with the committees. And, you know, even though if it was a couple, if, if, even though it was a couple meetings, like, from uh, personal experience this year, we had uh, two Special Olympic athletes um, with us at Brocky Motion Ball, and you know, I tell you, uh, even even though it was over, a, even though it was over a Zoom meeting, you could see that you know they were in, they that the that the just the just a small amount of social interaction with other people meant a heck of a lot than you know I think any of us. Could, uh, any of us could have realized uh, it's something that you know we'll we'll, we'll uh, it's something that you know we'll we'll always, we'll always remember uh, on, on, honestly because you know they were just so excited to see us and like j- and just talk talk to us honestly and you know that that's what fuels motion ball I think is the athletes sure. and you know how important was it albeit virtual uh, to you know give them give give the chance to introduce them to the respective committees and to give them that all important uh, social involvement. Yeah, it, it was the most important thing we did, to be honest, um, as much as, you know, we're a huge funder of Special Olympics programs in Canada. Um, I think it's those interactions and those relationships and friendships that have been built through Motion Ball events for the last, you know, almost 20 years now. That's what really makes the difference. Um, for sure. 
you know, so you guys got to experience that as the Brock Motion Ball Committee. We had teams of students, young professionals, um, corporate supporters from across Canada who registered in groups as well. And, you know, in each of those cases, we also assigned a local Special Olympic athlete or two uh, to their group. So they were able to have that same experience, you know, meet athletes over Zoom. Um, we had some doing, you know, socially distanced drop-offs or park visits. Um, it was pretty incredible to see our supporters, you know, some returning from previous years and some brand new to the cause, um, really stepping up and recognizing, you know, that this year has been hard on all of us, but individuals with intellectual disabilities have certainly been disproportionately impacted. Um, you know, a lot of people in that population are actually at higher risk of contracting something like COVID-19. So it's meant, you know, even when you or I have been able to, you know, get out a little bit more, you know, hit up some local patios, which I personally was dying to do for months, um, you know, a lot of athletes weren't even able to, to make it to that step. And a lot have, you know, had to stay at home, haven't been able to see any friends, um, you know, and even for you know, everyone, you know, not being able to get back to those sport programs has been really devastating and it's has had, has had, um, you know, pretty substantial impact on, on athletes. So being able to create that same motion ball experience of, you know, meeting your teammates and, you know, sharing some laughs. And even if it was over zoom, like, it was, it was so awesome to see that come to life. It's something that from the beginning, um, we just as a, a staff and some of our motion ball volunteers have been um, hosting calls every Friday morning with about 40 Special Olympic athletes um, from a few different communities who, you know, have been with, involved with motion ball for a long time, um, just to kind of, you know, keep up that social connection. And I actually, you know, feel closer to a lot of the athletes that I ever have. And these are athletes I've known for years and years. And Interesting. Um, Okay. Yeah. So, and just through the, through that, like we started doing those, like I said, in mid-March and just hearing from the parents or the caregivers of the athletes saying, you know, like my son or daughter looks forward to Friday morning every week. Like it's the only thing we have going on. It's the highlight of, you know, their, their week and um, makes them feel as though they're still a part of something, even though they haven't been able to attend, you know, what they would normally be doing in terms of their sports so it's it's been heartbreaking in so many ways to see the impact of of these canceled programs and competitions but to be able to recreate that that social experience and those personal connections that we all crave as humans um you know to be able to facilitate that and and to see that that happen and, and become a reality for our special olympic athletes through this event was you know it was the most important thing we did for sure it was awesome and, you know, what's great, too, is a lot of those relationships will continue, you know, like at when our next Brock University event can finally happen um, in person or whether it's virtual, um, you know, with Motion Ball, um, you guys and, and your committee members and teammates having, you know, already made those those relationships with those athletes, I know just ensures that they feel a part of something bigger, that they feel celebrated as they should. Um, and, you know, I think it'll it's setting a, re a really great foundation for um, you know, future involvement with Motion Ball, definitely. definitely. For sure. Yeah, interacting with those athletes is sure during a time where it's uncertain and difficult, you know, it's definitely a light, their positivity and their energy, you know, it's contagious. So it was a true joy, yeah. you know, for us to be able to interact with them. So that was really good. Good. I'm so happy to hear that. So speaking about your time with Motion Ball, with the events, what has been your favorite memory so far? It can be something general or a nice moment you had with a special Olympic Olympic athlete. I know me and Will for sure have our own, but what's one of yours? Yeah, hard to say. I, I wish I think shows how lucky I am. Definitely a lot of highlights. Um, honestly, the, I will say these Zoom calls on Fridays have been a huge highlight. Interesting. Um, hmm. You know, in some of the darkest times and, you know, the weeks where, I wasn't sure if we'd be able to continue as an organization or wasn't sure what was going to happen next. Holy we're crap. About, you know, my family and, and things wow. like that, having those athletes there, you know, to, to keep reminding us like why we're going to push forward, why we're going to continue doing what we're doing. Puts into perspective. Um, definitely. And yeah, some like really fun times. So we do a dance party every Friday. Um, so, like, yeah, DJ DXB is like our resident motion while DJ. He is awesome and always sends us like a new playlist Friday morning to, to play. So loving that. Awesome. Love it. Um, but yeah, outside of, you know, this weird year we're having I've definitely had some some pretty incredible experiences with motion ball so I would say a highlight last which would have been last March now um was really kind of at the point where the motion ball U program went from 
being, you know, pretty small, just Queens. And then, you know, after we got going at a couple more schools, um, to something much bigger. So this was last March. It was the same weekend that the second, I guess, annual Brock event would have been. Um, we had 18 events happening at different universities across the country in the month of March. So um, it was the first really like massive, like, okay, this is, this is real. This is really happening. I got the chance to um, go out to quite a few of them, like back to back to back. I think I drove to Montreal for McGill's and then flew out to Halifax and came back and did... Um, queens and bishops um and the yeah the, the events were incredible and just being able to feel that oh, well there was a ton of you know interaction between the schools and competition you know bishops was calling mcgill to try and you know make see who could raise the most money from ocean Mall that day and um i think that's when it, it really took off and, and felt as though you know not only is this something bigger than i even thought it would be i think it's something that's here to stay which is pretty neat because you guys know how university works like it's a revolving door you're only there for four years um but seeing you know motion will be a part of current students experience um uh, is huge and it also you know it means that it's going to be part of future students experience as well and you know what i'd love to see about motion ball um is you know so much when you're in university is unique to your university experience you know i i had to say goodbye to so many programs and volunteer opportunities and friendships when university ended um but motion ball isn't one of those things so the fact that we have um, you know, motion law chapters and committees in cities across Canada for young professionals um, create such a great model where, you know, when you graduate from university, like, you know, there's a motion law chapter waiting for you, whether you want to volunteer just at the event or participate at the event or attend a gala or join a committee, um, you know, that's there for you. And I think that's what's been really neat about going back to Queens or other schools that have now existed for um, a few years is seeing, you know, those students who were introduced to the cause in university, continue to give back, continue to stay involved um, and to build relationships through Motion Law beyond their years in university. So I think that probably that weekend last March was when it really kind of all came together and was, you know, was seeing really what this is and, and you know, what it could be. Um, and, you know, just even, I remember in particular going to the Bishop's event, it was actually, my brother was a student there at the time and had oh, worked nice. with with his friends to, to pull off this first event. Um, and, you know, there's something pretty neat about running an event for the first time at a new school. It's something, you know, even bigger. Brock was actually the same case where it was the first time that there was a motion mall event in that city. You know, sometimes we launch new schools in Toronto or Vancouver and it's definitely exciting, but there's already a big motion mall presence there. Um, so, you know, to have been there for the very first motion mall event in Lennoxville, Quebec, which is like a small little English community in rural Quebec, <laughs> Um, you know, and have so many athletes, Special Olympic athletes come out who, you know, if it wasn't for my brother and, and his friends and his teammates and, and their efforts in bringing this event to life, you know, those athletes wouldn't have had that experience. And, you know, those students would never have even known emotion ball is, let alone got to, you know, attend this, this pretty awesome day. So I think that, you know, really there's been a lot of long nights at the office and a lot of long hours and um, you know, it can be a demanding job at times, but certainly like all worth it. And I think that that definitely sticks out in, in my head, kind of a combination of that brand new event, brand new community, the family connection, like being able to share what I do with like my family and my friends in so many cases has been one of my, my favorite things about motion malls. So um, definitely kind of it, it all came together really nicely on that, snowy terrible weather weekend in march that i somehow managed to drive on scary quebec highways but all good um definitely yeah a huge a huge highlight so awesome you know and our friday morning dance parties that's my new highlight actually who doesn't who doesn't you know who doesn't love dance who doesn't love dance parties like that's, exactly. that's a definite <laughs> highlight i tell you but you know it's it's just great to see you know the explosion of growth that most balls mm -hmm. had and you know it, it displays the passion that students have uh, the, do students have for this aspect of sure. sport, of sporting of sporting life uh, more than you more than you know more than you'd expect you know there's a lot of students willing to give to give back and you know give their the experiences that they had to people who who you know don't necessarily have that yeah, have that exactly. same uh, same opportunity so yeah it teaches a really good lesson too like what we always say and what I always tell students is you know just because you're young, just because you're still in university or just because you're starting out your career doesn't mean you can't make a difference, doesn't mean you can't give back and, and make you know, events like this part of your lives. You know, we always say that Motion Mall exists to put the fun back into giving. And at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. Like we're trying to create fun events that you'd want to go to anyway, 
Um, and even better, like they support a great cause and, and you know, give you an outlet out through which to give back. And then you can choose, you know, a lot of our, our students and young professionals who have attended emotional events now volunteer on a weekly basis for Special Olympics or, you know, moved up in their careers and now are, are pretty significant donors to Special Olympics programs, or maybe they've chosen to support another cause or, or you know, get more involved with something else. And that's great too. Like if, if what we can do can not just introduce people to Special Olympics and, and the movement, but it can introduce people to community giving and, and, you know, to the charitable sector in general and, you know, teaching students about how to make that a meaningful part of their lives. And, you know, you don't have to wait until you're 50 and, you know, are making a good salary to, um, you know, make giving back a part, a part of your life and, and what's important to you. It can start when you're in university. So it's been a huge part of, you know, what I've been so grateful to be able to do. Awesome. Well, listen, Emma, uh, it was a pleasure having you on to share yeah, the story you. of motion, motion ball, uh, your story of how uh, you went, you've got, you, you've got uh, fully immersed into the motion ball chapter. And to end off the show as a tradition, uh, it's a little bit of a curveball, but uh, we like to give the guests uh, the floor to, uh, you know, uh, to end off the episode. Can you say, you can say whatever you, whatever you want, maybe what's going on now with motion ball, what's going oh. on with your life. Uh, anything goes. And uh, as we often say, Emma, the floor is yours. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Will and Courtney, for having me. Uh, so great, you know, to see not just people like yourselves keeping some positivity going through a year like this, but the fact that you're both students in university and making time to do this and, and committing to something like this is huge. So congrats, you know, to you and your whole team. I'm sure it's been, you know, a great outlet and a great resource to other students. And um, you know, what I would say to current students is it, I'm sure it's a really hard time. I'm sure you didn't expect to be spending, you know, what might be your fourth year and final year of university, you know, on Zoom. And uh, it's definitely not what I would have wished upon anyone. But I think that people's, you know, resiliency and, and power to overcome adversity is apparent more than ever this year. Um, I think that future years will seem much easier than everything that we went through this year. So hopefully um, some positivity there, but definitely, you know, make the most of 2020 and, and what will be 2021. Um, but at the same time, you know, don't beat yourself up because you, you know, didn't get all the experiences that you would have wanted to this year. Um, I'm sure, you know, a lot of us were planning on, you know, taking on new volunteer opportunities or taking a course or, you know, getting that new job, um, you know, there's so much out of your control right now. And, you know, don't f think that more was in your control because it's very unlikely that it was. Um, we'll get back, you know, time might be linear, but our lives aren't like you were saying, well, um, there was so much that, you know, I did throughout university or, you know, in my job experience so far that didn't necessarily line up time-wise. Like, you know, if you look at my resume, of course it all makes a ton of sense and looks very purposeful. But after I graduated from Queens, I really wasn't sure if moving to Toronto was the right choice. I was like serving in a golf course all summer. Um, wasn't that glamorous by any means. Like it was, you know, I was like, oh, I've made it, but also I have done nothing. Like at the same time, it, you know, it was pretty um, scary. Like I know a lot of people like to, feel when they're finishing university it's it's a bit unsettling so um you know those feelings are normal and they're only going to be amplified unfortunately by you know a worldwide global pandemic so don't beat yourself up for that um there will be more time coming there will be more opportunities coming and if you can use this time to you know research jobs that are out there or um you know, volunteer with something virtually or, you know, attend a, a virtual conference, you know, take advantage of, of being a student and, and having those opportunities available to you. Um, one thing that I found really valuable when I was a student and, and trying to learn more about this industry was just spending time on LinkedIn, which I know sounds weird, just like creeping people on LinkedIn is actually a really effective thing to do to try and figure out, you know, what jobs are even out there? What are people working in sport or nonprofit or, um, you know, sport management or something related to teams? Like, what are they doing? Like, what are the jobs that exist? And how did they get there? That's actually how I, you know, discovered the George Brown program was I was just looking at people's career paths. And um, that can be a huge way to figure out, you know, what might be out there for you, what you see yourself doing. Um, and, you know, uh, honestly, a good thing to do right now when we all have some time on our hands. Um, so yeah, definitely my best wishes to all students, you know, in your program or, or anyone who might be listening. Um, definitely we're going to be gearing up with some more virtual motion ball initiatives over these next few months. So we'll be sure to kind of share that out through, um, you know, your networks and, and through Brock's motion ball committee and, and, you know, 
all across the country. So definitely we're going to get creative. Hopefully we can get back to in-person events sooner rather than later. But, you know, like you've both spoken to, it's it's that connection with the Special Olympic athletes that we're going to try and continue. And, you know, they need us more than ever, that's for sure. So grateful to, you know, have your support and so many students across the country. And there's definitely room for more if people are looking to get involved um, in something um, that's virtual right now, but will be in person eventually. I know, you know, we're always looking for more volunteers and supporters of Motion Ball. So yeah, grateful to have been here and, and to go, get to share my story and, and to talk more about Motion Ball. So thank you. Thanks again, Emma. Appreciate you, ha appreciate you coming on.